Okay, guys, let's talk for just a little bit about the 13 colonies and the economics of them. Well, first of all, I want to make sure that we all understand that a colony is a group of people who settle in a new land but remain subject to their original country. So in other words, if this bird over here represents the colonies in America, I guess it's kind of shaped like that, then over here we've got England, and this is the original country. We're going to call that the mother country. And the mother country of England, which we could call Great Britain, founded 13 colonies on North America's east coast and successfully ruled them for 169 years. Other nationalities helped settle the colonies, but the population, language, laws, and culture remained predominantly British. That means mostly. In 1776, the colonies did break free of their mother country and became the United States of America. So here we have the 13 colonies, and I see the New England colonies. It lists them as New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. Okay, so I can see those right over here. Notice that Maine is not actually its own colony. It's part of Massachusetts. Then I see the middle colonies. List them right over here. That gives us New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. So you know, try to circle those. And then we've got the southern colonies of Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. So these three regions are going to become very important to us. Notice that Maine was part of Massachusetts and that the area that we now call Vermont was once part of New York and New Hampshire. So that was a little bit confusing. Um, and keep in mind that these are not the only British colonies ever in the whole wide world. They're just the ones that we are going to talk about. So when I look here at the New England colonies, I have to ask myself, how did these people make money? Well, when I look at what was available to them and the types of things that they had going on, I see that we have a lot of shipping. I see that we have a whaling industry. Now, remember, this is back before oil, before the discovery of petrochemicals. And so how did we get oil for our lamps? How did they get oil to grease the engines of things? They had to use whale blubber. And so that was a legitimate business back then. Poor little whaleys. Sorry. Um, we've got here uh, fur trapping. Again, sorry animals. But over in England, they realized that fur looked pretty awesome as a hat or a jacket. So they kind of liked these things. Um, I see lumber and some grain, but the grain's down here. It's down further south and uh, more lumber up here in this area. If you know anything about the northeast of our country, there's a lot of forest going on up here. I also see this thing called rum. Rum is alcohol, and you make it out of sugar. So I wonder where the sugar comes from because it's definitely not growing here. But these people are going to make money by shipping items. They're going to make money in, in the fur trade. And they're going to make money off of rum. Now here in the middle colonies, I see something pretty interesting. I see that we still have fishing and grain and everything. I see that we lost our shipping. There's not as much of that going on. We lost our fur trade. There's not as much of that going on. I see that there is more grain. There's grain all around in here. Uh, remember that in the New England colonies, the grain was around in this area, so it was close. Um, I see again this whole rum thing, but what I'm noticing is that they don't seem to have some of the stuff that the New England colonies had, and it kind of makes me question if perhaps they didn't work with a lot of trading to get stuff from the New England colonies to themselves, and then it makes me wonder if perhaps they didn't pass some of those things on down to the southern colonies. So speaking of the southern colonies, here we are. And when I look at the southern colonies, I see that their economy is based on something a little bit different than there was above. Now in the New England colonies, I did not see any tobacco, rice, indigo, or grain. I didn't see these things. What I did see was some lumber, some fish, some cattle, and some rum. There's that rum again. Where's that sugar coming from? But 
down here, I see that there is rice and tobacco and indigo. Remember tobacco saving Jamestown, Jamestown, Virginia. So I can definitely see that. And it's amazing to me that down here where we have all of this land, look at how much land we have. This is where we're growing all of these products. And so I can see that perhaps this is where our plantation system is going to be because we're further down in latitude as well. You remember latitude, the lines on a map going horizontally. So we're down further in latitude, which means that we're going to have a longer growing season, better soil, and that's a better place to grow these crops. So all of this leads me to this word right here. This word is mercantilism, and it is an economic system that calls for a nation to become economically self-sufficient. In other words, they rely on only themselves. The goal of mercantilism is to make the home country or mother country as much money as possible using resources and labor from the colonies. So in other words, here... In the 13 colonies, yep, that's what that is. Over here is England, yep, that's what that is. And in the middle, we've got the Atlantic Ocean. So when I read this definition, what this means to me is that England over here is trying to use the colonies over here to make as much money as possible, except that that's not the right kind of sign because they don't use that kind of dollars, but that's okay. So mercantilism is a system that's trying to make England as much money as possible. So let's talk a little bit about two words that we need to understand if we're going to understand how a global economy works. First of all, I need to know what an export is. An export is something that is sent from my country. So in other words, if I make something here, I can send it over here and they have to pay me money for it. Okay. An import, though, is something that is brought into my country. So it came from here. They sent it over here, and I have to pay money for it. So in order to make money in an economy, you want to be exporting more than you are importing. It's called the favorable balance of trade. So I'm going to call this little guy England, and I'm going to call this little guy 13 Colonies. And basically, here's what happens. The colonies are important because they provide raw materials like all the crops and the fur and the lumber, okay? And they also provide workers. So in other words, they provide the raw goods like tobacco, rice, indigo. Over here, this should be over here, by the way. Doo -doo -doo. Over here in Great Britain, which all of this should be inside of this box, over here in Great Britain, we have the finished goods. Like they turn the other stuff into pots and pans and dishes and fine furniture. And then they turn around and sell that stuff for a profit. So they take the raw goods from America over to England, where England makes it into the final product, and they get to sell it to make more money because you're going to pay more money for the end product than you are for the raw goods. So... It's kind of like England here is holding the 13 colonies down under, his, under its thumb, saying, ha, 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 we're in charge of you, we're above you. So how do you enforce such a thing, such a thing as mercantilism? Well, you have to create some rules. And since we were going from the 13 colonies across the ocean to England and back, we decided to call these things the navigational acts, how to navigate through these trade routes that we're going to talk about in a minute. So these were created, these acts, these laws were created to regulate trade between England and its colonies. The purpose was to make sure that only England benefited from colonial trade, not Spain, not France, not the Netherlands, Okay, they wanted to make sure that only England was making money here. So certain colonial goods such as tobacco, rice, and indigo could only be sold to merchants in England. Other places could not buy them. Also, anything leaving the colonies could only be transported on ships built and owned by companies in England. So maybe the ship might have been built in the New England colonies, but it was probably built by a company that was owned in England. And so all of this money, this big cash flow of money 
is coming in from the colonies to England. So in the previous slide, I talked to you about some trade routes. So there's the 13 colonies and there's England. Well, actually, remember how there were different regions? We have the New England, Middle, and Southern colonies. Well, sometimes the New England colonies would send something over to England. England might then ship something back to the Southern colonies, and the Southern colonies might send that back up to the New England colonies. So we've got this triangle of trade created. So it says the southern colonies were in a good position to trade with England. The soil and climate in the southern colonies allowed them to go grow cash crops like tobacco, rice, and indigo. These cash crops didn't grow well in England, so England was willing to pay money to import them. So they would take the goods from the southern colonies to England. On the other hand, the soil and climate of the New England colonies was very similar to England. The triangular trade developed because the New England colonies had few goods that England didn't already have. For example, New England has fish, but so does England. England isn't interested in importing items it already has domestically or within its own borders. The people in the New England colonies needed to find a way to make money, so they developed the triangular trade, they meaning England. This is a trade route from the New England colonies to the West Africa and then to the West Indies. So, from the New England colonies, rum, guns, cloth, tools, lumber, all of these things were sent to West Africa, traded for slaves, and West Africa would trade slaves for sugar and molasses. Hmm, sugar. Sugar can be broken down and turned into this thick syrup called molasses. And then these things could be returned back over here to New England where sugar that had been turned into molasses would then be turned into rum. So that rum that we talked about earlier, the sugar did come from somewhere and it came from the West Indies. Remember West Indies? We're talking about Cuba, talking about the Bahamas. We're talking about where Columbus thought he was in India and he wasn't, so they called that the West Indies. So here's a little picture to show you what I'm talking about. We would take, they would take things like rum and other goods and send down to Africa. In Africa, they would trade those things for slaves and they would put the slaves on a ship and send them this way. From here, they would take the slaves and trade those for things like sugar and molasses and send that back up here to New England. So we developed this triangular trade route. Notice the name of the part of the triangular trade route that the slaves were on. It's called the Middle Passage. But they developed this triangular trade route so that things were going from one place to another to another and back. And so we were getting multiple things. Here's another picture of looking at the triangular trade routes, but there were actually several trading groups. Here's the one in red that we've already talked about, but look, we've got things leaving from the middle colonies and the southern colonies going, we've got slaves going from Africa up to the southern colonies. Eventually, we've got things leaving the New England colonies going over to England, coming back as finished products. We've got tobacco, rice, and Indian leaving the southern colonies and going up to England, and we've got guns and cloth coming back down here. So really, there are multiple triangles that can be drawn, and they are called the triangular trade routes. All of those triangular trade routes were set up to make sure that England was making as much money as possible and that the colonies were basically doing the work that would produce money for England. Now I want to just talk for just a second about the difference between an indentured servant and a slave. Indentured servants were people who wanted to come to the, to the colonies but had very little money. The indentured servant would sign a contract with a wealthy landowner. The landowner would pay to bring the indentured servant to the colonies. The indentured servant would work for a wealthy landowner for a period of time without pay. It was usually right about seven years. At the end of that contract time, the landowner would give the indentured servant some tools and land and the indentured servant could go off and start their own life. However, Indentured servants would eventually become competition to that wealthy landowner. Wealthy landowners then began to use slave labor instead. The first slaves arrived in the English colonies in 1619 in Virginia. So think about it. 
If you've got these indentured servants coming over, yeah, that's great for the seven years that you've got them under your control. But as soon as they work off their contract and they're able to go off and start their own farms and start making their own money, they're not competition for you. So this idea of slave labor, somebody you don't have to pay, you don't have to set free, they're never going to be competition to you because they're always going to be under your thumb. Why would you not want to use them?